got a new novel out today called Hashtag Me As Well. He is a longtime uh, uh, co-executive producer and writer of Seinfeld episodes, the man who brought words like yada yada and shrinkage into our lexicon. Uh, he is Peter Melman. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, this is about uh, a Pulitzer Prize winning sports columnist for The Washington Post. Um, who's had decades of, of a great career, mostly blameless existence, I'm reading right here, tosses out a characteristic one-liner, and then social media picks it up, joke goes viral, and uh, craziness ensues. Is this about Tony Kornheiser? No. It is not. Okay. I think it's, you know, I started out at the Washington Post in sports, and I think it's me if I had followed all the rules and stayed at the Post. Okay. You know, like if at all that time I had, covered teams and did everything and became a columnist and that's where I am like now. Tony like Tony yeah pretty much but it's um you know it's it was my effort to kind of take a humorous look at the um at the me too movement because it's such a funny thing you know it's funny it's, it's so ripe with humor and that's why you went to it and, and, and put, no, a, put I mean, a book together you know, I, I, it's hashtag just, me as well it's actually kind of a funny story because the joke he tells mm -hmm. that gets him in trouble mm -hmm. is there. He's sitting around with a bunch of sports writers, and they're discussing a notoriously soft NBA player. Let's say Charles Smith. <laughs> um, <laughs> Spoken like a diehard Nick fan. Okay, very good. And this player happens to be on the injured list, yeah. and so my guy in the book yes jokingly says how long is a guy usually out for a hysterectomy <laughs> and that's what goes viral and it goes the joke goes viral and he gets caught up in the me too movement because you know people think it's incredibly sexist and you know i mean i wanted to you know kind of tightrope the line between something that is actually funny is borderline sexist, but right. could be interpreted, you know, it, it kind of walks a line. And here's the funny thing you'll love about this. I had that idea like 20 years ago. And when I was doing a show on ABC called It's Like You Know, mm -hmm. I called up, I called up um, Tommy Schlamme, the director of Sports Night, right. and said, I came up with this idea because these ESPN guys, you know, they're constantly trying to be so funny that what if one of them goes too far? Right. And he makes that joke. So I had that joke 20 years ago. And, you know, Tommy Schlamme says to me, don't you have your own show to do? That's yes, right. <laughs> and I said, yeah, but, you know, we're on the same network and I can't use that idea, but I thought it would be really good for you guys. So I'm being a team player, which I don't really like being, but I am being a team player. So he did not run it up the Aaron Sorkin flagpole? for Not only for, did for he run it up, yeah. I'm at an ABC party a couple of weeks later yeah. and Aaron comes up to me and says, can I have a word with you? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, he's like offended that I get. Mm -hmm. And he goes, that idea you gave and you calling, that was the bleepingest classy thing I have ever heard. And I, you know, like that is so classy. And I said, oh God, I'm glad Aaron, but you know, you gotta get work on your verbal cues. You know, you scared the hell out of me. I thought you were offended. <laughs> So anyway, I had that oh, lying around for 20 years, you know. And now it's in hashtag me as well. You get the book that's, uh, that's available starting today. Um, so also, because you know Tony from back in the day at the Washington Post, you worked on Sports Beat with Howard Cosell for three years? Yes, I did. What in the heck was that like? You had a good, what's your favorite Howard story, Peter? Um, my favorite Howard story, I'll tell you, a, you know, the fastest one. Okay. Um, Speaking of me too. Um, oh no! No, but this is but this is but this oh, is no. Howard. You know, I okay. mean, all right. You know, nobody knows that how funny he was. Okay. You know, he was incredibly funny, and um, I'll tell you one quick one is that you know we interviewed Donald Trump up in his tower mm -hmm. when he owned the USFL team. Okay. And you know, I thought, well, what a nice guy. Mm -hmm. And then we walk out and. Howard says to me on the street, he goes, Careful. Have you, I've never met anybody so lucky to be born rich. <laughs> That's what he said? Yeah. 
Nailed it. <laughs> and uh, but the other story I want to tell you, the, the funnier story I want to tell you is driving in a limo with Howard on a brutally hot New York day. Yes. Driving west and. There is on the corner a woman who's clearly a model, you know, like a fashion model, standing on the corner waiting to cross the street. Mm -hmm. And two cars in front of us almost collide. Mm -hmm. And Howard sticks his head out the window and says, Honey, you've got to be more careful. <laughs> <laughs> and to her credit, the girl was hysterical laughing. Telling it like it is, Howard Cosell. Peter Melman, longtime co-executive producer of Seinfeld and writer right here in the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, I've got a list of some of your great works with Seinfeld. Um, the apartment episode that you wrote, George wearing a wedding, wedding ring to see what it effect it has on women. Did you ever do that? Um, no. I actually just made that up. You just made that up? You didn't know anybody who did anything no. like that? Okay. No. Um, what about uh, the... Well, Kramer's seizure to Mary Hart, somebody had that, right, in real life, correct? I think that was Larry's idea that he threw, that, you know, like he added into that. That was a great idea. That was, so he just threw that one and, in you know, there? at first we weren't allowed to use the Entertainment Tonight theme. They wouldn't let us use it. Why? I guess they were offended and the show wasn't a big enough hit then. But when the show became a huge hit yes. and we went into syndication, they they let us use the music. They We pushed, we put in the music you know, for the syndicated shows. Right. And, and, and I've, saw, I've, I've met Mary Hart, and she thought it was hysterical. <laughs> the episode's called The Good Samaritan because uh, Jerry trails a hit-and-run driver and then falls in love with her and gets very attracted yeah. to her. Is that something that you, you did yourself, Peter? No. <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. I guess that's why you're a terrific writer. Um, you know, that's the thing about fiction. Yes. You got to make it up. What about shrinkage? <laughs> Do you make that one up too? Shrinkage was, I had this story and I was struggling with it. Right. And Larry <laughs> calls me over and says, you know, I'll tell, what, what if G George goes into the pool and, it, and it's very cold <laughs> and the girl sees him? And I said... Oh, you mean like shrinkage? <laughs> and Larry in his brilliance says, yes, shrinkage, and use that word, use it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lar Larry is so fireproof in what he thought was funny, it's unbelievable. And so he's like, yes, that's the word. And you just used it off the top of your head. And that, what, what about yada, yada, yada? Where did that one come from, Peter? Um, this is so strange, but in 19... 88 or so when I was a freelance writer in New York, mm -hmm. I had a lunch with an editor from a woman's magazine and she said yada, yada, yada a few times. And I thought that's kind of weird. I never heard that. Mm -hmm. And somehow it came back to me, you know, what, 10 years later, right. nine years later. And I was thinking, oh my God, you know, if you say yada, 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 you can gloss over all forms of sin, mm -hmm. you know? And so the idea just sprung from that. And, you know, the funny thing is, I didn't think yada, yada, yada would take off like it did. I mean, in that same episode, there was anti-dentite. That's right. And that's the one yeah. I thought that was going to go through the roof. That's right, because Tim Watley had converted yes. to, to Judaism and started telling Jewish jokes. Yes. And, and that's when Jerry went to confession, right? And <laughs> that's my favorite line in the whole episode is that this offends you as a Jewish person, says the priest. He goes, no, it offends, no, it offends me as a comedian. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, um, so fantastic. you know, the Ted Watt, Tim Watley, what's his name? I, yeah, Tim Watley. No, the Brian, actor, Cran Brian, Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. Sure. Years later, I bump into him at a Dodger game when, and, you know, I congratulate him on, on Breaking Bad. And I, then I said to him, but God. What happened to you? You're not funny at all anymore. <laughs> He's well, such a great guy. Well, he told a story here that the the scene where he took a hit of the nitrous oxide before putting it on the patient mm -hmm. came from, didn't he say it came from like a lighting guy? The lighting yeah. guy said, why don't you take a hit of the nitrous before you put it on? Uh, really? Put it on. And he just, and he said he took away from that best ideal wins is what he said doesn't matter who it comes from oh yeah that was know. why it was so, that was part of 
the best thing about the show is that it was such a happy set and everybody was like free to contribute. You so know? did you ever have the shower head that knocked you over? Is that something too? I'm trying to just figure out what happened to you in life and then you um, said, I'm going to put it on Seinfeld. No, I try. I once froze out my landlord and the super because they wanted to change my shower to a low flow. <laughs> and you know, I, I couldn't have that. So, you know, like you take these things and you bring them, you know, like in the smelly car. Yeah. You know, that happened to my friend, Barry Landsberg, and mm -hmm. he could not get the smell out. But, um, you know, it didn't attach itself to you. You know, that's where the fictional part of comes course. in. You know, if I, I realized that, you know, if I could get everybody to go through that car, I could ruin their lives for that day. <laughs> that's right. And that was the point of the show, is to, like, ruin everybody's day and end up in a bad place. So you never had a girlfriend that was a masseuse who refused to massage you? That never happened? Uh, that kind of happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened. Where Jerry was just so pissed that yeah. his girlfriend who was a masseuse would not massage yeah, She gave him. my friend the massage, and he's going, God, she's amazing. <laughs> you know, like, I'm having... All I'm getting is the sex. What's going on here? Oh, my God. That is phenomenal. Yeah. Peter, I could go on and on and on and on, but as they say, after they've got the top of the hour hard out. Uh, congratulations on hashtag me as well that everybody can get uh, and enjoy your, the latest from in between your very fertile mind um, that uh, people can go buy where all books are sold. And um, thanks for coming on here, man. Hey, really this is perfect it. timing because I'm actually on a verbal load management. Is there? <laughs> so uh, this, I've just hit my, I've hit my, is my that, quota. Is that right? Yeah, I'm so, on load management uh, from my publicist. That would have been a great episode, load management, don't you think? Yeah. That would have been a great episode. I keep coming up with more episodes and I have nothing to do with them. <laughs> <laughs> verbal load management. That could be a great fantasy team name for us, right? And Peter, I like that Peter, one, Peter, Peter, Peter <laughs> verbal or, load management, or, or a rock band. That'd be you not know, band. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together because I, I think James Dolan would rather win a Grammy than than a, an NBA championship. Like given the choice, he would rather win a Grammy than than the Larry O'Brien Trophy for your New York Knickerbockers, Peter. I yeah, he'd probably rather you know win an award from the Grand Dragon of the KKK. Oh than, my gosh! You know, <laughs> See now that is what we call. A wormhole. And that's what we go. By the way, that's like Costanza. You're out. That's yeah. it. That'll walk out. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.